Well, Fitbits, Apple Watches, fitness trackers, they are certainly the thing right now. But even if you don't have one, you still probably heard you should try to get 10,000 steps per day. But the question is, why 10,000? Why is it such a magical number? To answer that question, Dr. Elizabeth Mead with Swedish Medical Center is here to answer those questions. Good morning once again. Morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so first off, where did this recommendation come from? We think it came actually from Japan around the time of the Olympics in the 60s. Um, they, they were selling these pedometers with sort of this magic number of 10,000 steps and it became a little bit of a craze. Yeah. And then it's kind of stuck around since then. Okay. Uh, I have a Fitbit right yeah. here, and I always, I'm kind of addicted to it right now because yep. I'm always trying to get to 10,000. But, you know, for those that don't have one, how difficult is it to get to 10,000 steps? I mean, it's kind of hard yeah. for a lot of people. It's about five miles of walking every day. So it's, it's, a, pretty good. it's a decent amount of exercise. Yeah. I think for people who are sedentary, especially if you have a job where you sit a lot, it can be really hard to get to that number with just every day kind of moving around. Yeah, so if you are that, you know, sedentary person, yeah. not keep really keeping track of, of your steps, I mean, for an average person, uh, how many steps do they typically get? Well, it's not great in the U.S. There are a lot of people that are only getting to two or 3,000 steps a day, so they're a far cry from that 10,000. But I think it's also important to point out, I think people get very focused on this 10,000 steps yeah. number. But if you're getting 5,000 steps and you're spinning or biking for an hour every right. day, you have to take that into consideration yeah. too. You gotta put that in perspective. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, you know, what are the health benefits if you are aiming to get 10,000 yeah. steps? I mean, is, is there something beneficial for that? I think it's a great goal. We certainly see that when it's combined with other healthy behaviors that it can decrease your risk of heart disease and diabetes and other kind of chronic health conditions. So it's something to aim for, certainly. If you wanna go more than 10,000, that's even better, we oh, think. Yeah? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that's that's quite a goal as well. Uh, what would a typical day of 10,000 steps look like? I mean, do you automatically get, I mean, do you run more? Do you, I mean, yeah. what would it look like typically? Well, I think it's important for people to know that you can really break it up. So if you go for a 20 minute walk with the dog in the morning and another one in the evening and you're running or walking for exercise during the day or you park or you walk to work, park far away, yeah. those are all things that really can add up. So it's very doable if you're mindful throughout the day of how to do it. Mm -hmm. I think the, the tough part is when you haven't moved all day and then six yeah. o'clock at night comes and you think, oh my gosh, I have to do 8,000 more steps. That seems <laughs> really right daunting for block, people. Right. <laughs> and I know people that just walk around in circles trying to get it to vibrate, right? So right. I think you can really get stuck on that number. Yeah. The important thing probably is to move throughout the day. Yeah. So if you have a job where you're sedentary and you're sitting, we really recommend that every hour you get up and move for five to 10 minutes. And that probably decreases your risk of disease just as much as that magic 10,000 number. Yeah, I've, heard, I've seen some pretty creative ways people get to 10,000 yeah. steps. Um, so I have a Fitbit, mm -hmm. um, other people do as well. Well, but are you know this this costs what hundred dollars maybe sometimes two hundred three hundred dollars sure. depending on which one you get but are there any like cheaper alternatives for people to track their steps? There are pretty cheap pedometers. I think the the thing with pedometers and with Fitbits and all sorts of devices is that you have to remember to have it on your body. Right. Um, there actually are great apps on iPhones and Androids that are many of them are free that track your steps and most people have their phone with them most of the time even <laughs> if you're running or walking. Yeah. So that's actually a really nice free way to track your steps as well. You know, is there anything negative about you know, getting to 10,000 steps. I mean, we th make this this lofty goal, a yeah. healthy goal, but I mean, is there anything that's negative about getting to that you goal? You know, if you're at a place where you're not moving much and you're at a couple thousand steps a day and you try to go straight to that 10,000, that can have some negative health effects. So I would say we recommend that you add about a thousand steps a day each week to try to get up to that goal. So you don't try to do it all at once. Yeah. And certainly if you have any chronic health conditions or concerns, always talk with your doctor first before you do any of this. And as we mentioned, be creative and don't just reach the 10,000 goal. Exactly. Right yeah, I mean, it's really important to move. So if yeah, you do 10,000 yeah. steps in two hours and you lay flat for the other 22 hours of the day, that's not so healthy either, right? Yeah. So really be thoughtful and kind of practical about how you can work it into your everyday life. Sounds good. I'm gonna get my steps right now. Dr. Right, Elizabeth, let's do it. <laughs> thanks a lot for joining us. Back over to you.